what the heck is a good way to set up for spray painting when you have a small workshop. Hola, well, we're here at Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. Obviously, I'm not gonna set up this inside of my one car garage workshop because there's a lot of tools in there and there's no room for this. So this is another case where I put my wife's car out in the driveway so I can use the carport. So what I've got here is a simple setup. I don't use it real often. I should use it more often because the results are good. But a simple setup to do some spray painting. I've got a spray tent. Uh, this one is Home Right Spray Shelter. Set it up kind of like a tent at the campground. It's got some rods that go through some sleeves and it sets up really nice. And then the second thing that I have is uh, inexpensive, meaning about $260 on Amazon. I'll put a link to both of these down below, plus some other items. It's an Erlex spray station, model 5500. It's a beginning level and obviously does a few things. It's not a super sophisticated, but it's good for beginners and the price is good. You are not going to run your uh, spray guns off of your normal compressor, at least any compressor that normal small workshop guy would buy. Uh, so this is self-contained. It has, uh, it packs away really nicely in that the hose, which is fairly long, I forget how long, but there's a hose that goes down inside of the unit for storage. So this all takes up very little space in some corner of your workshop when you're not using it. You can see I keep getting more and more holes out of there. So it gives me the ability to get around uh, pretty much any paint job. This is all kind of like the electrical and the sprayer and the carrier, everything built into it that you need. Let's get the electrical out here. So the electrical wraps away nicely as well. Maybe I wrapped it away too nicely. So that'll go in the base. Hose goes, gets put away. That's obviously gonna get plugged in. So you gotta have some sort of electrical out here to where you're gonna spray. And this is nice in that it holds the sprayer upright when you're in between spraying. So this doesn't fall over. All right, so a nice unit there to provide the power with a hose and electrical. Then you have, the, you have the spray gun with an aluminum holder and that's got a Teflon coating on the inside, which makes it easier to clean up. Depending on whether you're gonna be shooting up or down, if, you, if you're gonna be shooting up, you would take this and turn it the other way so that when you're shooting up, it would be down in the bottom of this. If you're gonna kind of shoot level or down, then you can just have it pretty much anyway. Probably be best if it's leaning forward. You put your paint in here, and then this just clamps on, and then you tighten it down here. So there's no screwing and screwing. It's just a simple attachment with this to hold it tight, all right? Well, that's the unit. Obviously you need a work piece that you need to paint. What else would you want to have? The tent, unless you want to repaint your home all the time. All right, you're going to want to have uh, some respirators unless you want the inside of your lungs to match your newly sprayed work piece. Because this is a really fine mist and there's no way you're not going to breathe it in if you don't have on a respirator. You will want a lot of very handy uh, shop towels for, uh, so I don't ruin my cloth towels all the time. I like these Scott rags in a box. You can tear them out, they seem to last forever. Unless you want to clean up your hands all night long, and I also find it good to use these black nitro gloves so that I, I probably throw them away, three or four of them while I do this because I get paint on them and then if you grab everything, you're gonna get paint on it. So it's nice to accidentally get paint on your gloves, take the gloves off, put on a new pair and then not get paint all over everywhere. All right, so the gloves, the uh, paper towels. I like to take some uh, brown paper 
and put it down on my tarp. Now this tent doesn't have a bottom, so you provide your own canvas for the bottom. And to avoid um, having paint everywhere and the stepping in it and tracking it in the house, which tends to upset my wife, uh, I put that brown paper down here and I kind of keep the wet paint there so I know kind of a boundary lets me know exactly where it is. When you're mixing up the paint, you're going to want to thin your paint because you're using a sprayer. So I have a little kind of a mixing uh, container. Erlex provides you with this little cup. You fill that up full and then you time how long it takes it to drain down. If it takes uh, more, in this case of this model, more than a minute and 55 seconds for it to go from a steady stream to finally a breaking stream, then your paint is too thick. If it will drain quicker than that, and I may not understand that properly, if, if you do and I don't, then put some education down in the comments because that's what the comments are for. So there's a little thing to test the um, viscosity of your paint. All right, and then you want to get yourself a lot of these filters because when you are pouring that paint into your paint mixer, you don't want any uh, hardened globs or anything to get in there because those will clog up that needle in this spray gun. So you want to filter uh, to keep out any hardened uh, paint from, from earlier sessions or something. So I'm going to mix up a little paint here. First thing I'm going to do is put on a pair of gloves. Because I'll get this all over everywhere. I like to have these paper towels available because I'll get the paint down the side of my can, down the side of everything. So I like to wipe it up the minute that I do that. All right, got these black nitro gloves on. I'm going to I'm going to do a 10% uh, dilution, and so this has measurements on the outside of it, so I know how much water I want in there first, based on filling it up with paint. I'm going to go with about that amount. Let me uh, put the sieve here. Get it over on my uh, brown paper that I talked about. One thing you ought to have in your workshop is lots of things to stir paint with. Those are called cutoffs. So save a few of the small ones like this. This one's just out of plywood. Again, I like having that brown paper, so kind of my wet paint stays here. Let's uh, pour some paint into this filter. This paper cup has a wire mesh, or not a wire mesh, but a mesh in the bottom that allows the paint to go through. And it filters out uh, any clumps that I might have. Now, you're probably gonna, not gonna be able to see it, but I have a big clump right in there from where I probably left the can off the paint too long and I would not want that inside of my spray gun. So, uh, good thing that that got filtered out. This is almost as exciting as watching paint dry, watching paint drain through these filters. All right, I'm gonna get my, uh, this is just a mixing bowl that I've got. I'll put a link to it on Amazon if I can think about it. Since I put water in there and uh, then the paint 
to dilute it. You don't want it to be too thick or to gum up your uh, your gun. I'm not going to do, do the drip test because I did this a number of times yesterday. So I'm just going to get my uh, paint in here. Try not to step on my glasses. I don't necessarily have to use all of that paint. Uh, I could um, pour it, whatever I don't use, I can pour back into the original paint container. I'm gonna use this water that I have. I like to have water right here with me, not have to run into the sink or go to the hose. And I'm gonna get this kind of thinned out in here. All right, we've got our paint in there. Let's get our uh, mask on. Pull our pants up. Get stuff out of our way. I'm really happy with this unit. I uh, studied quite a few of them and then just decided to start inexpensively to get a little bit of learning curve for what I'm doing. And uh, turns out this will probably suffice for my level of work. All right, so that's secure on there. I simply wanna put my hose into the pump securely. I don't have to have this in my paint area. I can have it out of the way over here. Get my hose unfurled in a way that I can handle it. Stick the hose in the gun. Typical mistake is to overspray and then end up getting drips or uh, runoffs. So try to avoid that. It's better to come back later and do another coat real thinly. So do a thin coat, go in a pattern, keep your spray gun straight in front, don't tip down, don't bend it left and right like this. Pull it across, go in a pattern down, and then you can go in a pattern the other way, trying to keep it level all the time. Well, that's it. I've got my units all sprayed uh, in a quicker than I could do it by hand, certainly with all of these crevices and cracks and more thoroughly. So there's the right time to do spraying and a right time just to quickly do it by hand. This looked to me like the right time to spray. I also like to spray if I want to really find a shellac finish or something uh, on a nice piece of furniture. All right, so while I'm gonna drop this from this home right spray shelter, drop this down, it's got little Velcros here. That'll keep any five or six year olds from putting their hands on here. And uh, let that dry for a few hours while I clean up my paint for about half an hour or more. I hope you uh, like these videos designed for beginning woodworkers. As I learn how to do things, I try to teach others how to do the same thing. And usually, I teach by my mistakes. Give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscription, and stay safe in your workshop. Small Workshop Guy, signing off. Mm -hmm.